Hello folks. So you've probably heard me talking about the Mercury Transit of 2019 in my previous videos. And in my opinion, I think it's going to be the solar system event of the year by far. And let's just hope it's not going to be cloudy because the next one is not going to happen until the year 2032. So we got to get this one right. So the first thing we need to do is manage our expectations. This is a NASA picture of the planet Mercury, and it is not going to look anything like this from our vantage point here on Earth. Now what's going to happen during the transit is that Mercury is going to pass between the Sun and the Earth, and we're going to be able to see Mercury as it's going across the Sun. And Mercury averages between somewhere between 4 arc seconds and 12 arc seconds in size, depending on the location of the Earth, where, where the planet of Mercury currently is, and when it's going across the Sun during the transit, it's going to be somewhere around 11 arc seconds. Now to give us an idea of how small 11 arc seconds actually is, if we divide the sky by 360 degrees, the Andromeda Galaxy, which is usually captured with wide field telescopes, takes up three full degrees. Now to give you an idea, when compared to the Sun, let me go to the Sun here, the Sun doesn't even stretch for one degree. It's only about half a degree. So we need an even smaller unit of measure. There's actually 60 arc minutes in one degree, and the Sun is around uh, 31 arc minutes in the sky. So while there's 60 arc minutes in one degree, there's actually 60 arc seconds in one arc minute. And since the Sun is 31 arc minutes, let's calculate how many arc seconds it goes across. So we'll take um, 31 arc minutes times 60 arc seconds for each arc minute. And we come up with 1860. So that's how many arc seconds spans across the disk of the Sun. Now if we said that Mercury at the time of the transit is going to be 11 arc seconds across. Let's divide 1860 by 11. 169. So that's how many Mercuries we could actually fit across the disk of the Sun during the transit. If my math is right, I hope it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what it appears. So let's take a look and an example of another of a Mercury transit that NASA had captured before. Yep, just as we calculated, it's going to be small and this is what it's going to look like come November. A little black dot going across the sun, but I, I still think that's super cool. And I'm probably not going to use, I mean, I think it will be viewable on my Solar Scout, that, that uh, the Daystar, uh, what was it, the SS60DS, to, to get me the full disk. I, it, I think it will be visible on that, but it's going to be appear as a really tiny dot. I, I'm going to stick with my AR-102 scope with the standalone quark, because that, that scope has around 664 focal length multiplied by 4.2 Barlow that's built into the quark, and I think that's going to give me probably somewhere over uh, 2,700 focal length. I'm definitely going to be sticking with that. And let me show you one more thing here. Okay, so I've launched this planetarium software called Stellarium. A lot of people use this in this hobby, and it, it's really simple to use. And I want to see exactly when this transit is going to start on November 11th. This program will give me a good idea. I'll probably be checking other websites too as that date gets closer. So um, let's switch the date in this software to November 11th. Now I need the sun to be at least 20 degrees high so I can see it from my backyard. So that's uh, November, let's see, November 11. Now let's look for Mercury. All right, and Mercury is in the grass at 11 p.m. So let's lower the time here. Okay, so you can see at, uh, let's see, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it looks like Mercury is right on the disk of the sun. So, um, that's, 
it's definitely going to be over by around then. So let's let's follow. Okay. Oops, now we're probably in the grass again. So around, I'd say, according to this software, we are, I would say, right about there is where Mercury, you can see these rectangular red indicators here. That's where Mercury is going to be, and this is the sun right here. Let's see if we can zoom in and see. Hey, okay, there it is. <laughs> you can see Mercury, that little dot. And it's going to be, now this is my location, by the way. It's going to be different for other people in, um, in their location. But in Detroit, Mercury, it looks like in this software, it's going to be touching the disk of the sun at around 7.36 in the morning. But look at the sun. You can see it's only around two and a half degrees. That's way too low, so I won't be able to see it from the start. So I'm going to start increasing the time here. All right, and now you can see uh, Mercury is starting to make its way across the sun. But I need the sun to go higher. I'm going to keep advancing the time until the indicators on the right here get to about 20 to 25 degrees. <clears throat> so I'm still missing a lot of this transit, so that's sad. Now I'm, I want to do this out of my own backyard. No. Nope. Still not high enough. So Mercury is already almost halfway across the sun, and I'm missing it. I want to go do all this to around 25 degrees or so. I can probably do it by 25 degrees, but just to be comfortable, let's just say 25 degrees for me. All right. So Mercury is halfway through by the time I can actually see it at around 10.30. Let's back up. Yeah, so there's the south, and it's going to be in the southeast. And let's see, from 1030, all right, I'm going to be able to see it from 1030 until, I'm screwing up. 1030 until about 1. PM. So I've got about, um, what is that, about two and a half hours. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun day, and I just hope it's not going to be cloudy. So um, let, let's hope for clear skies, everyone. I, I hope you found this entertaining, and I will see you later.